From the Paul's capital, Kathmandu, we board our twin otter plane to fly east to Lukla. Situated on the edge of a 9,000 foot mountain, Lukla Airstrip was built in 1964 under the supervision of Ed Edmund Hillary after buying the land off local Sherpas for just under $3,000. The runway was paved in 2001 and in 2008 the airport was renamed in honour of Sherpa Tensing Norgay and Sir Edmund Hillary. It is here where adventure in the Himalayas begins. Starting our track now from Lukla, going to Padding. From Lukla, we head northwards to Padding, then steep ascents to Namchi. We continue to Temboshe Monastery and then Pangboshe and then spend two nights at Dingboshe. The trail continues steeply to Loboshe and then Gorik Shep and then on to our ultimate goal, Everest Base Camp. The 14th of October. We leave the little town of Lukla and set off on the first short leg of our 12 day adventure. Heading northwards along the valley of the Ducosi or Milk River and eventually reaching the small settlement of Pak Ding. Always walk clockwise around stupas and marnie walls, otherwise it's considered bad luck. Zigzagging along the Ducosi River, we use suspension bridges to cross and some are more welcoming than others. <laughs> Ever the Joker, Chong Sherpa, he is our assistant guide, together with Bim Tamang. And leading from the rear is our leader, Nermel Tamang, and Kami Sherpa. <laughs> when 
we eventually reach our first night's accommodation at Pak Ding. I'm ready. Let's move. Let's go. Let's go. 15th of October. We leave Padding to head to Namchi, and we continue following the Dukozi northwards. Plenty of wobbly suspension bridges on this leg of the journey. We're now entering the Sagamartha National Park. Only six kilometers, and yet another four hours to Namchi. Join our group. Final resting stop by the riverbed before our final 600 meter ascent to Namshi. I suppose we better get on with it. Well, here goes.
And finally, after six hours trekking, we reach Namchi Bazaar at just under three and a half thousand meters. Namchi is the administrative centre of the Kumbu region. It's a prosperous Sherpa village and an important trading centre. And there are many shops, bars and hotels here. Our second night's accommodation. Sixteenth of October. Another early seven AM start, heading to Kayanjuma. Firstly we're climbing steeply out of Namchi. We're gonna head first to the Everest View Hotel, with its commanding views of Everest and Amadabla. down onto Namchi. Our very first view of Mount Everest. Amadabla. Welcome to the Hotel Everest View. Opened in 1971, Hotel Everest View offers a 360 degree view of awe-inspiring peaks, with a view of Mount Everest from every room. It is the highest hotel in the world, at 13,000 feet. We now descend into Komjung, to visit the Edmund Hillary School and then on to Kumdi to see the Edmund Hillary Hospital. Built in 1961 by the Edmund Hillary Trust, the school has over 300 pupils and is the only high school in the Kumbu region. It's late in the afternoon, so most of the pupils have gone home. Apart from a few playing on the seesaw with Paul, he's the bigger kid wearing shorts. <laughs> Time for lunch. And here's Clint demonstrating how to eat chilies. 
sugar. No, that needs water. You want sugar? No, it's not that hard. It's just it's got a nice bit. It's got a kick on it. That is. Nepali is the good medicine. That's good. Good. From Kumjung, we had to come the hospital. Founded by Sir Edmund Hillary in 1966, Kumbi Hospital serves 8,000 people from the Kumbu region. This is the only permanent hospital in the region. So uh, the next hospital is down at Lukma. Small size hospital, same as here. So uh, we open all around the year. The hospital was found. The cloud is clogging in now. So we're now heading for Komjung Monastery. <laughs> Among the many Buddhist manuscripts and deities, the monastery houses the strangest of them all, the Yeti skull. Whether the Yeti exists or not remains an enduring mystery and will live on in research and legend. Where'd you go? <laughs> One of the buildings that was damaged in the earthquake in 2015. We're now descending to spend our third night in the town Kayanjuma. So, uh, as you can see, we're at the Abadablam Lodge and Restaurant here. High in the peaks uh, with a bracelet seller staring at me in the face thinking what the hell is that idiot doing? And over there is Abba Dablam itself, hiding through the clouds, snow caps and kissed by God. <laughs> snap of that this morning. It's starting to look like the, the um, Alpen. Um, nice bracelets, I know, aren't they? After dragging ourselves away from the bracelet sellers and all the souvenirs, we leave Kayanjuma and head to Tamboshe Monastery. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. At Poxy Tanga, we cross the Ducosi and then begin a long and arduous ascent of 600 metres through a forest to Tambosha.
I'm a Dublin, always in our sight. So this is the local tap, fresh water from the mountain. Here's the uh, quick wash. Get up the water. Beautiful, fresh mountain water. <laughs> Beautiful, it's ice cold, very refreshing. Recommend it. Come on then. After a gruelling two hours, we finally reach Tamboche. <laughs> Tengboche Monastery, at 3,867 metres, was built in 1916 and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is the largest in the Kumbu region. Tembosche is host to a fantastic panorama of mountains, including Everest and Nupsi and Amadablan, provide a wonderful backdrop to our tea house. Chop chop time! Eighteenth of October. We initially descend through a forest before climbing steadily to Dinboche. <laughs> Kumbula means God of Kumbu and is considered the sacred mountain of the Sherpas. No one climbs it and no plane can go over it. This is moving, let me get you guys up. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> now we're on the way to what that call? Upper Pangose. Pangose, I think. Upper Pangose. Yeah. And we're gonna take rest there for a while for tea break. Yeah. And after that, we are going to visit monastery. Yeah. And as soon as we finish our monastery visit, then we're gonna move ahead to Somari and Dimbuchi. Brilliant. Tonight, okay. And your favourite mountain? Over there, I'm Dublin. You can see which is like 6,800 meter high. My favourite. Real. All the time. Great. Mangboshe Monastery, built 600 years ago, is the largest and oldest monastery in the Kumbu region. Pangboshe, at 3,900 metres, is the highest permanent settlement in this valley. We continue ascending the valley to Dingboshe. Here we have Everest. <laughs> you can actually see the Hillary Step.
private Dimbushay at 4,530 metres. A summer settlement where great peaks surround us. Nineteenth of October, we're having an acclimatisation day, ascending Nanga Tashang Peak. As you ascend to higher altitudes, air pressure reduces, so there's less oxygen. So you have to breathe faster and deeper to get oxygen into your body. After a few days at altitude, you acclimatise. Breathing rate slows down and the body makes more red blood cells to aid oxygen around the body. Altitude sickness can take many forms from headaches, loss of appetite, tiredness and nausea to more serious forms like vomiting, uncoordination, hallucinating and it can lead to cerebral oedema which can result in seizures, coma and death. Pulmonary oedema is a build-up of fluids in the lungs. Again, this can lead to coma and death if not acted on. So, a general rule for acclimatizing over 3,000 meters is to only increase altitude by 1,000 feet per day. And every 3,000 feet of elevation gained, take a rest day. If you climb more than 1,000 feet in a day, as long as you descend to lower altitude to sleep, you climb high, sleep low. Another 600 meter climb today as we head to Le Boche. We are now crossing the end of the terminal moraine of the Kumbu Glacier and we will rest at Dougla for a while. Sean! Yes. Snickers. Black tea. Black coffee. Two. Leaving Dougla, we ascend steeply to Chukpulari, a poignant place where there is a line of memorial stones in tribute to climbers who have lost their lives on Everest. The trail eases off as we follow the valley to La Boche, a tiny hamlet with a few tea houses. Clint from the planet Krypton, together with six other members of the trekking team, 
are being sponsored to raise funds to help rebuild houses in Thang Palkot, a village that was totally destroyed in the Poles' devastating two earthquakes that happened in April 2015. This is our first view of the Kumbu Glacier, which leads up along the valley to Mount Everest. And at just over 16,000 feet, we arrive at Lobuche. Namaste. It's our final night, the night before base camp, and we're all tucked up. It's only about half past seven. It's absolutely freezing. We're going to have an early start tomorrow. This is at half five. We're up at five, we're leaving dead on six for Gorak Shep. That'll take us about three hours. And then after Gorak Shep, we have a light lunch and then off to base camp. So all in all, tomorrow will be 9 to 12 hours walking. So, on that note, good night folks. Morning, it's 6am, uh, it's uh, base camp day. Uh, <laughs> We've got about an hour and a half to go up shed, go and then we're going to have you say bright sunshine, uh, bite to eat or something, and some lunch. Somewhere. I don't know what we're having. <laughs> Hot drink. And then we're going to go to base camp, which is on the Kumbu Glacier, which is Terminal Moraine, so it'll be ups and downs, a few boulderings. And then we'll get to base camp in about three and a half hours after then. For the last donation I did, I didn't share it on Facebook, but I will this one. Morning. Morning. Heading at this base camp. Correct. <laughs> We're going to base camp. Yay! Yay! We can't recognise people this morning because they're that well wrapped up. This is Rob. I think. <laughs> How's your head this morning? Very good, actually. Good. Yeah, fingers are numb, but head's good. Morning, Phil. Morning, Simon. Morning. Morning, Here him. <laughs> yeah. Final push. Yeah. Everybody's excited this morning as we set off on a long 12 hour day following the Kumbu Glacier northwards to Gorak Shep. And then we continue on up and down the moraine to reach Everest Base Camp. Shed. And then afterwards on to base camp. Oh, 
At just under 17,000 feet, Gorak Shep is a frozen lake bed covered with sand. It's the final village before base camp. The trail to base camp starts by walking on a sandy flat and eventually onto the lateral moraine of the Kumbu Glacier. We ascend the side of the glacier for a couple of hours before finally descending onto the rocky glacial moraine itself with its fascinating ice seracs. When you finally walk for several days, 10 days or so, you finally get to a sign. Sign says every space camp at 17,598 feet, or if you're European, 5,304 meters. All of that time, all of that money, all of that work, the pain, everything that you've gone through in your life, all of those dreams comes down to a sign. You can see the Rombok Glacier, and then it gets bluey as it goes and makes its way up to Everest. And this is why this is a base camp, and we're not going up there. Hi there, so we're on our base, Everest base camp trek and uh, the trekking is tough but one of the hardest parts of this challenge is, is the sleeping accommodation. I mean this is, well this is the size of the room, it's very very small, it is absolutely freezing cold so we're like in a shed really, it's a tin roof, the windows, there's drafts coming through, I've got a sleeping bag, sleeping liner, I'm sleeping in my gloves, I've got my t-shirt on, my socks on, hat, it is absolutely freezing. We've got a toilet down the corridor, um, that, there's a hole in the ground that like about 20 rooms have to use. But, well, this is actually quite good compared to the people who are living in Nepal where their homes were destroyed by the earthquake. Um, and that's why we're doing this. I mean, we're freezing cold and we're just suffering for a few days. But these people have been living like that for two years. So we want to help them and with your help and if you can help us with some donations, that would be much appreciated so that we can rebuild these homes and so they've got somewhere, at least a roof over their heads and some walls and windows rather than living in a wooden shack. Um, Clint, how are you finding coping with these conditions? Look, I've been in these conditions before, but this is... This is pretty cold and uh, pretty rough. I mean, the size of the room to start with is probably less than half a single garage, um, but I think it is the cold. Yeah. No insulation, um, tin roof, and uh, 
literally the uh, harsh mountain weather is just out that single glazed window so very grateful for what I've got back home and, and also grateful for the opportunity to help people rebuild their own homes. So if you uh, would like to support us and help a family in Nepal um, so they've got somewhere to call home and, and somewhere to stay where it's a little bit warmer than the shack they're living in, please, please, please just, just spare some uh, money. There's a gist giving link and uh, any donations, doesn't matter how big or small, will be much appreciated by the people of Nepal. Thank you very much. See you soon. Thank you. 22nd of October. Another long day. We retrace our steps along the Kombu Glacier, firstly stopping at Loboche for lunch, and then continuing on down the valley to the lower altitude of Perrache. We're not out of the woods yet. Almost. Oh, you're this one, eh? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. How the Twenty-third of October, our penultimate trekking day. We leave Perrache and follow the Imjakola Valley to Namchi. We were going to stop at Kayanjuma today, but we have lost a day due to our plane having to be diverted and having to stay an unscheduled night in Ramchap Mantala. So we have to push on an extra four hours to reach Namchi, which will make today's trek an extremely long one. So leaving Perrache behind, uh, we're now heading, going to, where are we going first? Namche! Namche Bazaar looks your boy!
first day. You see that, I'm a Dublin. I'm sick of seeing it. <laughs> After crossing the Imjicola River, we now ascend to Tamboshe. Tang Boshe. Well, it's our last day now and we're going to be trekking to Luckla, which will take about 10 hours. We're keeping our fingers crossed and everything else. Um, we've heard that the flights are going because of the mist, as you can see. So hopefully that will clear for us for Wednesday morning. So off we go now. Twenty fourth of October, our final leg of the trek. Leaving Namchi, we have another long day, heading towards Lukla. At least for the most, it's downhill. Straight on now. town of Lukla. Woohoo! Woohoo! That also signifies that we have now finished the massive Big track to, come around to the left, we've now finished a massive track to Everest Base Camp. If you come up here you know there's money coming to the area because there's developments on the go as you can see on your right hand side. On your left hand side you can book an aeroplane ticket I think and actually this pile of rubble is going to be turned into a building, can you believe that? <laughs> Success rate, 100%. Exodus, thank you very much. We have an extremely experienced... Come on, Chunk. Namaste. Chunk's How are you? Welcome to Lukla. This is why there's 100% success rate. In Exodus. People like this, you pray for us every morning. 
<laughs> Come on, keep coming. Little shops here, we can get mobile phone stuff, electronics, whatever you need. This is the North Face Himalayan Resort. <laughs> there is also, coming up on your right hand side, you'll never believe this, and we will be here tonight. Oh. This is an Irish pub. Now, there's another Irish pub that's the highest one in the world. This isn't the highest one in the world, but it will do for tonight. Great. Two for one, drinks. Hello. 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 The end of a brilliant adventure. After 11 days trekking, we finally reached Lukla, where it all started. Let's just hope and pray that the plane flies out to Kathmandu tomorrow. Let's get some beer! Good news. After a long wait at Lukla Airport, we finally take off. It was a sad moment having to say our farewells to Kami, Bim and Jong, our assistant guides, who no doubt will be greeting another group of trekkers and repeating the same adventure. Kathmandu, situated in the valley, is the largest city of Nepal. Shut off from the outside world until 1951, it has a population of 2 million in the city and 6 million in the Kathmandu Valley. It has a multi-ethnic population with Hindu and Buddhist being the majority. The city is the gateway to the Nepalese Himalayas. Richly decorated Buddhas guard the steps that lead to the ancient site of Swayampanath, the monkey temple. There are 365 steps to climb to reach the two and a half thousand year old site, which for centuries has been an important center for Buddhist learning. The central stupa, Swayampanath, is situated on the Padmachal Hill. There's a height of 10 metres and circumference of 64 metres. It represents the four elements earth, fire, air, and water.
Some lovely work. Yeah. Um, I like trekkers. Yeah. Oh, I like that. It's lovely, isn't it? That's really cute, that. Yeah. Thousand? Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Pashu Pataneth is one of Nepal's great pilgrimage sites. <laughs> The temple is considered one of the sacred temples of Hindu faith. Stone plateaus are situated along the river and are used for open-air cremations that take place on a daily basis. Pashu Patanath, with its many temples and religious monuments, has been designated a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. Our final night's meal together. Giving our farewells and presentation to Nirmal, our guide, for our spectacular adventure in the Himalayas. And with some traditional Nepalese dancing thrown in. Trekking in the footsteps of Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay and other legends, the Everest Base Camp trek took us through Sherpa country, past cultivated fields and hamlets, along valleys and crossing rivers, through forests and into high altitude scenery, offering us views of Amadablam and other mighty Himalayan giants. The highest reaching Everest Base Camp for the magnificent view of Everest, the highest mountain on earth.